The first question stands the name of the Honourable Tau Hanare. Mr Speaker, uh, my question is to the Attorney General. What recent announcements have been made about the review of the Foreshore and Seabed Act 2004? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, yesterday Cabinet, the Maori Party and the iwi leaders agreed to address the major grievances associated with the 2004 Act, including removing Crown ownership in favour of a non-ownership model, restoring that fundamental human right of access to justice, and providing for the recognition of uninvestigated customary title. Mr Speaker, will New Zealanders notice much of a difference under the replacement legislation? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, New Zealanders who were largely unaffected by the 2004 Act will notice very little difference as public access and existing use rights are protected. However, Māori, who was so disproportionately affected uh, by the 2004 Act, will notice significant improvements as their fundamental legal rights will be upheld and they will be able to go to the courts or negotiate with the Crown for recognition of basic property rights, including customary title. The Honourable Tau Hanare. Mr Speaker, uh, how have negotiations with the Māori Party and iwi leaders progressed over the last 19 months? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, negotiations have at all times been principled and indeed very pragmatic, and I want to thank... Uh, the iwi for the hospitality and courtesy shown to me during the many hui that I attended. I also want to acknowledge the constructive and invaluable contribution of the Māori Party and can I single out the contribution of Mrs Turia whose courage and conviction throughout this process and indeed since 2003 have been an inspiration. In moving forward New Zealand owes Mrs Turia a great debt. The Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In what way does vesting the foreshore and seabed as public space give any group more or fewer rights than vesting it as Crown land? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, vesting the foreshore in the way that is proposed uh, removes the weeping sore, as the Prime Minister called it, of absolute vesting in the Crown uh, and provides a staging post so that individual iwi or hapu in some circumstances uh, will be able to investigate uh, customary title. Mr. Speaker, order, the Honourable David. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question was very specific. It asked how, what, how did, does anyone get more or fewer rights as a consequence of the change? And the Minister did not address that. What I, I'd invite the Minister just to focus specifically on that issue raised because one could perhaps imply certain things from the Minister's answer, but that may, might be risky. The Minister should perhaps just make very clear what he means in relation... I thank the Honourable Member what he means in relation to that. The, the point of the matter is it will still be the obligation of an iwi who's unable to conclude satisfactory negotiations to prove certain things to a tribunal. Uh, so at the end of the day, the onus of proof is still going to be on iwi in that respect. Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David Payne. Uh, my question was what are the extra rights or fewer rights, and that still hasn't been answered. Well, the... The Minister, I mean, the Minister's given a further answer on it, and there are further supplementary questions available. This is question number one, and the Minister, the Member could ask, you know, exactly the same question again if he's not satisfied, but I think the Minister has given a further answer on that specific point. It may not have satisfied the Member, but it is an attempt to answer it. Supplementary, supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Does vesting the foreshore and seabed as public space rather than Crown land give any claimant group more or fewer rights? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. I would, would have thought it was self-evident from my previous answer that there is no change in respect of the position that must be adopted by iwi who make a claim or have to negotiate with the Crown. Question number... Oh, David Garrett. Supplementary to the Attorney-General. Is it correct that under the proposed legislation the Crown will be able, after negotiation, to grant iwi customary title 
and having secured that title, will EWI be able to grant coastal permits and resource consents instead of the local council? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Yes and no. The Honourable Nanaya Mahuta. Does the Minister accept that the same legal test should be applied in direct negotiations as will have to be applied by claimants in the courts? The Honourable yes. Chris Finlayson. Question number two. The Honourable... Is a supplementary question, David Garrett? Um, supplementary to the Attorney General. Which parts of the New Zealand coastline, if any, will not be subject to the grant of customary title where Iwi will effectively control activities along it, including reclamation, construction, removal of stru structures, etc.? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Huge amounts. <laughs> question number two, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker.